powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Another bomb explodes in Austin, Texas, and police believe it's likely connected to three other explosions this month. I'm Wendy Gillette in New York with what police are telling residents to do this morning. And former Montana Congressman, now Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke is defending a comment he made during a congressional hearing. Why he says the comment wasn't racist, that's coming up. We'll have both those stories uh, in a moment. Meantime, 631, Matt Elwell joins us now. Uh, we do have some weather to talk about we out do. there. Folks are going to be doing a little driving around, probably should be alerted. Uh, especially looking east of the divide. That's where we're seeing most of our issues. But we do have some road reports coming in talking about some wet, possibly icy conditions mm -hmm. on Homestake, Bozeman Pass, and down the Gallatin Canyon. Those are the areas that we're talking about. Most of the snow that fell last night came east of the divide. Our temperatures are cold enough that we are looking at some ice on a few of the area roadways. Weather concerns this morning. I'm putting the ice impact uh, into the slick side. I was described as crunchy by our previous <laughs> guest and I thought that was about perfect. Uh, most area temperatures into the mid to upper 30s this morning. We're going to see clearing skies, but more snow on the way before we're done. Uh, with the week. We'll talk about that coming up in a few minutes. Yeah, that was the Dean of the College of Arts and Architecture, Dr. Roy Smith. I he knows. I that. That's it's it. Signs well of done. a term. Absolutely yes. true. We're going to hold him firm to his words. Meantime, uh, some tragic news to talk about once again. Police say another bomb has detonated in Austin, Texas. That's right. Even though the explosion was different from the three other previous so far this month, police say they are working under the assumption that all blasts are linked. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette has more from New York on what we know right now. For the fourth time this month, police officers raced to an Austin neighborhood after an explosion. We do believe, based on what we've seen, that this was a bomb that exploded. It happened around 8.30 last night. Police say two men in their 20s were injured while either riding or pushing their bikes in a residential neighborhood. It is very possible that this device was a device that was activated by someone either handling, kicking, or coming in contact with a trip wire that activated the device. Police say the men's injuries are not life-threatening. They've asked people in the area to remain at home until at least 10 this morning as they work to ensure the neighborhood is safe. Those who did venture outside are looking for answers. I don't know if this was malicious or if it was just an accident, but I'm kind of scared that it's related to what's been happening. She's referring to a package bomb that exploded March 2nd, killing one man. Two more package bombs detonated on March 12th, killing a teen and wounding two others. Police say last night's explosion is likely related to the other three, even though the method of detonation is different this time. Officers are now asking residents to report anything that looks suspicious. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. Now, last night's bombing was in southwest Austin. The other three were in the eastern part of the city. The two men injured in the explosion are reported to be in good health at the hospital this morning. Shifting gears just a bit, Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke is defending his use of a Japanese greeting when responding to a question from a congresswoman of Japanese descent. Now, the congresswoman he addressed called his comments racial stereotyping. I believe that it is essential that we as a nation recognize our darkest moments so that we don't have them repeat again. So, Sec Mr. Secretary, I'd like to know, even with the president zeroing it out, are you committed to continue the grant programs that are identified, I believe, as the Japanese American Confinement Sites Grants Program, which were funded in 2017, will we see it funded again in 2018? Oh, konnichiwa. Uh, I think it's still ohayo gozaimasu, but that's okay. I guess it's after 10. Uh, but the, to your point, the priorities were set that fix, fix the park service, fix our stuff first. And this, and this program may have been caught up on that. I read about it this morning, and, and so I'll, I will look into it. I, I'm committed to understand the, uh, to making sure the importance of this, and I agree with you. Now, Secretary Zinke's remark drew criticism from some lawmakers, civics groups, and on social media as being insensitive and perpetuating stereotypes. The Arizona Republic reported Sunday that Zinke was asked about his use of the word Kanishiwa while touring the U.S.-Mexico border in Arizona on Saturday. Zinke told reporters, quote, 
how could ever saying good morning be bad, end quote. Zinke has faced criticism for some of his budget decisions, like his plan to dramatically raise admission fees to some national parks. Switching gears, a retired U.S. Air Force lieutenant colonel, a law professor, and an ordained minister spoke in Billings over the weekend. MTN's David Jay talked with John Eidsmo about his presentation on the historical and theological foundations of the U.S. Constitution. How do we create a government that has enough power to govern effectively while at the same time restraining that government? John Eidsmo says the United States Constitution is based on the Bible, including the Ten Commandments. The values that we found our nation upon are found in those Ten Commandments, like respect for life and the command, thou shalt not kill, respect for property and thou shalt not steal, respect for truth and thou shalt not bear false witness. The Big Sky Worldview Forum invited Eidsmo, who is the legal counsel for the Foundation for Moral Law in Montgomery, Alabama. And by understanding the Bible, the, reading the Constitution, you might even understand the Bible better, too. They, they're kind of like maybe two sides of the same coin in a sense. He says while separation of church and state is not in the First Amendment, the idea came from a Thomas Jefferson letter to the Danbury Baptists in 1802. When he talked about this wall of separation, he meant it as protecting the church from the state. Eidsmo has written 14 books and says the founders understood law is based on morality. Morality ultimately has its source in religious belief. Whether you want to admit it or not, legislating is a moral and religious exercise. The framers showed a great deal of genius in the way they designed this Constitution, and I think we'd be better off if we stuck to it instead of trying to revise it and reinterpret it into something that they never intended it to be. And he says all citizens can know and understand the United States Constitution. Read the Bible, read the Constitution, study it. And the Constitution was certainly never written with the idea that only lawyers should know it. Take your beliefs and put them into practice. This is intended to be understood by the common man. And we should all be reading it. We should all be studying it. David J. MTN News, Billings. Now through his work at the Foundation for Moral Law, John Eidsmo has handled cases involving home schools, Christian schools, public officials, and the Ten Commandments. Well, despite a little snow and the weather, thousands of people took to the streets of Butte Saturday for the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade in Uptown. MTN's John Amy was there, and he captured some of the sights and sounds of Butte's favorite holiday. Happy St. Patrick's Day! The streets of Butte flowed like green rivers as thousands turned out for the mining city's famous St. Patrick's Day Parade Saturday. They came from near and far. This is my first St. Patrick's Day in Butte. What do you yeah. expect? I don't know what to expect. I've heard so many great things. I'm very excited to be here though. And where are you from? From Portland, Oregon. Oh wow, what brings you to Butte? Here to drink and grin and be iry. It's it cold, yes it is, but it, the whiskey keeps you warm. Okay, it's St. Patrick's Day, you're Irish, it's your birthday. How do you survive this day? Uh, well, I, I'm an early uh, retiree, you know. I, uh, I retire early Finish. before it all gets crazy. <laughs> Kathy Ogren's friend, Marie Malaburn, came to Butte from Sacramento every year for St. Patrick's Day. This year, it was different. She never missed a St. Patrick's Day. She flew up every year. We had the best time, and she passed away last April. And I didn't want her to miss another one. So you got her with you. So I have her with me. So this is a sweet a sweet sad day. Thanks for coming out and enjoying the weather. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. John relayed that story with uh, to Caitlin Corbett and I while we were on our live stream broadcast about the uh, lady uh, bringing her friend to the parade. Even though she it's passed so away. It's an awesome sweet. story. 
Awesome. Spring. I love that she's I'm still choked. I've heard it. <laughs> I've heard it three times and it still chokes me. I don't me. know if I'm just way too tired, awesome. but that, no, that definitely that, just got me right to the core. Because it is all fun and celebration, but it, hey, it was absolutely what a true. day to celebrate your yeah, friend. That's it. That's we did so get great. to St. Patrick actually in the back of the flatbed. You saw him at the end of that story. He actually blessed the entire crowd with their hangover. So <laughs> we had him to do that on the live stream. It was awesome. Yeah, no, he, and you and Caitlin rocked it, I'll tell yeah, you. She was it was, awesome. uh, it was so much fun. Yeah. Live television is tricky enough as it is when you're juggling parades or maybe there's a hold up and then it's snowing and all that. Had a couple thousand people at us, uh, yeah. you know, just all packed together in one place. If you missed it, you go over to our uh, Facebook site or our, over to our website, skbkxlf.com. It's there yep. in all its glory and all of our dreams. You can and relive you can, it yeah. if maybe it was a little fussy the first time around. Yeah, just don't tell my boss I handed St. Patrick the microphone while he's in the flatbed. Yeah, there you go. I got it back. Okay, it was that's good. good. We're all Smart good. move. It was all good. Stay with us. Coming up, it is our weekly look at Under the Big Sky, sharing some stories with you in just a moment and now you can check out their full features on these three different Montana based groups. But first here's Gail King with a look at what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS this morning. Good morning ahead on CBS this morning we're in Austin Texas gathering new details about last night's explosion. It's the latest in a series of attacks there plus Parkland school shooting survivors Emma Gonzalez and David Hogg are in Studio 57 today. How they helped launch the national movement so quickly and what this weekend's March for Our Lives will entail. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.